If Gilead is known for one thing, then it's that they just love Infinity Rings. Just look at their newest fans. Infinity RGB everywhere. And now Gilead came out with a set of AIOs and yes, there are goddamn full of RGB Infinity Rings. We have some on the fans, we have some additional fan wing RGB and then we have more on the pump with a little Gilead logo, which, which does look kinda nice. But instead of just leaving it like that, Gilead went one further and slapped in a mini monitor in the center which displays a temperature and that is kinda cool. This is the Gilead Liquid 120, yes, it's the most innovative name of the year. But before we take a closer look at it and what that mini monitor actually does, let's have a look at the benchmark. Allowing the Gilead Liquid 120's fan and pump to run at a max speed, it managed to keep our 3900X 135W benchmark machine to be cooled down to 58.1 degrees C above ambient. This positions it slightly above the thermal take TH120 AIO and Pure Rock 2 Black Air Cooler. Compared to other AIOs in the same 120mm form factor, it doesn't look that good. Deepcool's Gamax and ZXT's Kraken M22 both outperformed it. Not even mentioning the Arctic Liquid Freezer 120, though that one is just so thick it's kinda unfair. On the whole spectrum, it doesn't look particularly good considering how much space there is to the top, but only looking at 120mm AIOs, it, it is kinda in the middle of them all. From there, we lowered only the fan speed in 10% steps and measured the noise creating a noise to performance graph. And on this one, the results got kinda worse. Sure, it beat the original AMD Roth Prism and ASUS Blizzard 120, but that's really not that much of an achievement. Other than these two, pretty much every AIO beat the crap out of it. Deepcool, Thermaltake, Kraken, Freezer, all 120mm AIOs had better ratios. The only debatable one would be the Cougar Aqua, which looks like a perfect extension of the liquid line. So for now, it doesn't look that good. Sure, if you want to compare small air use to small air coolers, the liquid can score some points, like against the Be Quiet Pure Rock 2. The liquid is a tiny bit better on a higher speed and then both lines kinda combine. But if you go by price and you add, for example, a Scythe Mugen, which again costs just as much, well then it, it is a this is what the feed looks like. With that said, let's talk about the AIO itself. The Liquid 120 comes in the usual Gilead box. A bit of imagery, some specs and a product description that we will definitely read out loud later on. Inside we'll get everything the usual AIO comes with. The AIO itself, a fan, mounting hardware for Intel LGA 1700, 1200, every 1150, 1366, 2011 and 2066. Or everything from AM5 going back until AM2 and a tube of thermal paste. In order to install the water block, we need to take either the AMD or Intel brackets, depending on your system, and screw them in from the bottom using the tiny screws included in one of the bags. Then for AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and the backplate. From there, take the included backplate, slide these inverted screws into the holes marked with the socket that you are using it for, and then secure them using the plastic holder. After that, rip off the tape to make the whole thing stick to your motherboard and position it behind. In case you're AM5, you can skip all of these steps because the original backplate is staying where it is. From the front, take the long screws, slap a spring onto each with a washer on top and screw the whole thing down in a cross pattern. And of course, don't forget the thermal paste. Over on Intel, we need to do a similar thing, but the holes in the backplate are in a different position, so we need to take the other plastic holders. But from there, same procedure. Position behind the motherboards, screw, spring, washer combo from the front, and there you go. The fan included with the Liquid series is an unnamed PVM controlled fan, spinning at up to 1800 RPM whilst pushing 61.9 CFM at up to 1.67 mm of H2O, a number I find surprisingly low considering how dense the radiator is. But hey, at least the frame of the fan is built in a way that no air can escape around it which is obviously necessary for radiator operations. But let's quickly talk about all of the RGB because it's kinda interesting. Both the fan and pump ARGB are controlled using a 3-pin controllable connection, so you can do whatever you want to it in your software. And by the way, it doesn't look bad. Bright, no obvious LEDs, 
It's a good job. The magic of the integrated mini monitor in the center of the pump starts to shine once the pump is running. Connect the pump using the three pin fan header, which you should do anyway because you don't want to kill your system, and boom, monitor starts up. This thing can display the usual two digits indicating a temperature, but it's not the CPU temperature as you might believe, it's solely the water. And that's also why it can be slightly deceiving. Now don't get me wrong, knowing the exact water temperature is a very, very good thing. It, it kind of gives you the best indication or, of how things are running. But if you do not know that, or if you do not know that the difference between the water temperature and the CPU can be as huge as 40, 50 degrees C, then you might still believe that the system is running fine, while actually it is really not fine. To give you an example, the display on ours never went above 40 degrees C, while we are stopping our benchmarks once the CPU hits 95. So you see how big the difference can be without actually telling you like, yo, things are starting to burn here. But hey, they tried, it's a really cool thing, it just won't give usable numbers to the average user if he doesn't know his own system exactly. But it's a cool thing to have, and Gilead really tried here. Like for example the radiator too, it's not all black, Gilead did engrave their logo in there. I may not be the biggest fan of all of the RGB, but that's really a design choice. You may like or not like it, but that's your choice, and they definitely tried here. A spot where they also tried is the craptastic product description, and Oh boy, Gilead needs a new copywriter. Gilead Liquid 120 features a masterpiece of top-notch liquid cooling technologies. The premium class high-density radiator, the silent fan with smart ARGB PVM and the high-class water pump deliver ultimate cooling performance. The all-in-one cooling handles the latest requirements, even the most powerful LGA1700 from Intel and AM5 from AMD. The support of TDP over 150 watts makes the Gilead Liquid 120 an overkill CPU AIO cooling solution for pro gamers and overclockers. Now, there is an issue with this text on the website where the 120 text suddenly goes into 240, like it's not 240 watts and 240 liquid, but it's like 150 and 120, but, but still, masterpiece, premium, silent, ultimate cooling performance, most powerful sockets, 150 watts TDP, overkill CPU AIO cooling, pro gamers, and the, and the pinnacle overclockers, like, yeah. Let's overclock a 3900K using the Liquid 120. I cannot see how that would end bad. This is a solid 5 out of 10 RG poops. One for the over usage of nice sounding words and four because they called a 120mm AIO an overkill solution for overclockers. So where do we stand? It's a 120mm AIO and it has the same problem as every 120mm AIO has. It's just not particularly good. It can't outperform a multi air cooler while it's costing a lot more and it's just loud considering how much it cools. But no, I'm not yet saying it's a bad product line. Let's wait for the 240ml video before we draw any final conclusion. But as of now, I certainly wouldn't recommend it as an independent product. If you really need a 120mm AIO, get an Arctic Liquid Freezer. It's like the only 120 AIO worth considering. Everything else is just, it loses just due to its size. And so does the Liquid 120. Sure, the water temperature sensor is a really cool thing, but that's basically everything. It isn't particularly good. The tubes feel horrendous. Sure, they are adjustable at the water block, but they feel really awful with that FEP sleeving and they are only like 30 centimeters long, making this thing only fit into the back or the last top spot inside the average case. So no, considering everything, go straight to 240mm AIOs or just get an air cooler. But hey, we also got the 240mm version and who knows, maybe the pump fan and cold plate are perfect and we just need a bigger red size. Who knows, but we will find out in the next video. But for this one, this should be all for Gelid and their newest Liquid 120. At this point, a huge thank you to them for providing it to us. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. 
And of course, we still have channel membership. So if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a course on how to become a pro gamer and overclocker. Because according to the description of, of this AAO overkill liquid solution, I am apparently doing something wrong and I need to learn stuff. Anyway, thank you for watching, but if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Arctic Liquid Freezer 120. I know, a really old video, but as of now, it is still the only 120mm AO that I would recommend to anybody. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.